Before I get into this video, I want to remind you that we're giving away a Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom Nintendo Switch OLED. In fact, we already unboxed one if you guys haven't seen that and showed off that we have that second one on hand. Also, we're giving away a collector's edition of Tears of the Kingdom and a pin from PAX East. To enter, all you have to do is go down to the link in the pinned comment or the description. And you guys know we're on our road to 133,000 subscribers because Nintendo is 133 years old. So I thought it would just be a really neat number to shoot for next. I'll let you know what our new goal is if and when we obtain that one. All right, guys. So look, Tears of the Kingdom, we've been talking about it for months at this point. Uh, it is an amazing game. It, we are literally looking forward to it. Lots of positive reactions, lots of information out there, and there's a lot we could talk about. But today I want to address something that's a little bit of a negative with this game that has happened since the previews came out. And it's been talked about ad nauseum by some people. A lot of the written previews sort of overlooked it, but a lot of the video previews have mentioned it in some form or another, either addressing it as I didn't see this as a problem or addressing it as it being a major problem. And what are we talking about? Well, we're talking about the performance, the frame rates. We're not even getting into the resolution. I know Digital Foundry did a uh, pixel count at one point saying it's 900p, which is exactly what it was in Breath of the Wild when docked. So that's kind of cool. I guess we'll see for sure because there hasn't been a pixel count of this brand new gameplay. And I'm not sure Digital Foundry got to go hands-on for this because the kind of reviews they do, the, the hands-on thing wouldn't really be as big of a deal. But what I want to talk about is this idea that the frame rates are a major issue and this idea of what it means because Nintendo's at Gamescom this year. I haven't made a video on this yet, but whatever. Maybe we just say this is part of that video. Nintendo's going to Gamescom. They don't go to Gamescom very often. They didn't go last year as an example. They only go when they have things to show. They didn't go to E3 this year, originally stating we don't have enough to show for E3, so we're not going to go to E3, and this is before E3 was canceled. So they clearly think they have enough to show at Gamescom, which happens in August, and notably Nintendo has nothing announced after July. So I'm bringing this up because I think this might have something to do with Tears of the Kingdom. And what am I talking about? Well, first, let's get into the frame rate problems and who's talking about I'm going to bring up two places specifically, uh, one of them being Arthur Gies. He is a co-founder of Polygon. He said, I played Tears of the Kingdom last week. I'll talk about it more soon. But one, the biggest compliment I can give it on the last day of demos is I attracted a small group of Nintendo personnel staring in horror at what I was building. And two, I saw major performance issues. And then Skill Up, a pretty big YouTube channel out there, noted in their preview, it's about 25 minutes long, that yeah, the performance issues are there and they do think it affects gameplay in a couple of ways. One, it chugs down exploration a little bit because when you're hitting things like 15 frames, that does affect your your user inputs and, and all of that stuff. And obviously, it just doesn't feel good when it happens. And here's the thing that I want to point out about all of this. Obviously, these are demos. I mean, we have to know these are demos, vertical slices of games, probably likely pretty finished versions if I had to guess. The game comes out in two weeks, right? So, like, these aren't, like, demos that they probably had sitting there from, you know, six months ago. So I would presume these are more recent builds, if not possibly the final game. I know some people are framing it as, oh, it's a vertical slice. It certainly looked like it wasn't. Nintendo was just watching over your shoulder saying, you can't go over there, you can't go there, you can't go there. How these demos typically work with open world games from Nintendo, and I know this because of E3, is basically they limit you by time. And then in this case, they didn't just limit you by time. They also watched what you were doing and said, no, you can't go over there. So, yeah, I kind of think this might have just been the full game with a timer added. So you're loading a save file with a timer and you just get to play for 50 minutes and 20 minutes. There were two different save files. Anyways, the point I'm trying to make here isn't about all of that. What I actually want to talk about is the fact that it is a demo, so maybe that's a thing. I also don't know that the performance issue is that big of a deal. And I'm going to state that I don't think it's that big of a deal because Breath of the Wild went on to sell 30 million units just on Switch, and that is with performance issues. The Switch version had performance issues. Uh, when it first launched, Kakariko Village and Korok Forest both chugged, as did various other aspects of the game. 
those various other aspects of the game still chug sometimes. And you're running that road for the first time to Sidon and you get to the uh, all the electric arrows firing from the Lizalfos in that one section. Yeah, Breath of the Wild still chugs there. And while they patched up Kakariko Village, if you go to Korok Forest, yeah, the game still chugs there. And yet, people beloved the game. They think it's amazing. They think it's awesome. And for the most part the frame rate drops didn't bother most players. And I think that's going to be the case this time around, is that the Tears of the Kingdom frame rate drops didn't bother most players. One thing to remember is the scope of this game, the scale, the draw distance, everything was increased, and yet the frame rate drops look to be about the same as Breath of the Wild. So to me, you could argue maybe they should have not increased the draw distance, not increased the visuals, and maybe just had it be a more stable 30 FPS, and I think that that's fine. I also think that this game was partially designed in the later years with the next system in mind. We've already seen that the Nintendo European research and development team is hiring people to help with cross-platform play between Nintendo Switch and the next generation platform. That's not me saying that. That's Nintendo themselves saying that. So it does make me feel like this is obviously designed with a little bit of cross-platform action in mind. And when we play on the next system... I doubt that there's any problems with this. And that's where Gamescom comes in because we're probably getting a new system this year or next year. And if it's this year, it would make sense why Nintendo wants to be at Gamescom because they probably want people to go hands-on with the system and whatever games they're announcing for the second half of this year there. So in that sense, maybe this is just one of those. It chugs here a little bit, just like Breath of the Wild. The Zelda team is ambitious. They might be more ambitious than this current system can do, but they also might know the newest systems around the corner that runs it at a silky smooth frame rate. In fact, maybe they already have a patch ready for the new system where you could either do a, a performance mode or obviously a visual mode, like a visual enhancement mode. Performance mode could be like a 60 FPS mode. Visual enhancement mode could be full 4K at 30 FPS. So I'm just throwing out there that well, I, it is a little disappointing, and I don't know that it's going to affect the overall review ratings that much because it certainly didn't for Breath of the Wild that had similar problems. I do think that some people are overblowing this to be too much. Like, this is exactly what was wrong with Scarlet and Violet. Scarlet and Violet's frame rate issues and graphical glitches were excessive. Nothing I've seen in the gameplay consistently from all these previews is excessive, aka it's just happening nonstop all the time. It's really in only specific scenarios and situations and with certain effects going on that seem to be causing this, and that's exactly what it was like in Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild's a pretty smooth experience most times besides certain situations with certain elements and certain things going on, and that seems to be the case here as well. So ultimately, if you thought Breath of the Wild was fine but Scarlet and Violet was an embarrassment, then Tears of the Kingdom is probably going to be fine for you as well. And I know a lot of you are saying, I'm just a Nintendo shill. I'm just making excuses. Nate, what's wrong with you? Why are you defending this? And the reality is that I'm not really defending it. What I am saying is the Switch is a six-year-plus-year-old platform using eight-year-old technology and yeah, it's time for something new. And we've all known this for a little bit. This game is just a definitive proof to me that Nintendo knows it too. This is one of their number one internal development teams, and their vision and scope goes beyond the capabilities of what the Switch can handle at a smooth 30 FPS. And when that's the case, you know, we could use excuses. Oh, it was a Wii U game before. We can't have that excuse this time. It's very clear that they are preparing for what's next. We've known they've been preparing for what's next since at least 2021 when they finally made first public reference that they are working towards what's next. So, guys, I'm just going to sit back and say I do think a new Switch is coming this year, and by the time that happens, you're going to play Zelda on that, and Tears of the Kingdom and all these frame rate issues are going to be a thing of the past, and no one's really going to care anymore. But at launch, just wait. People who are hypersensitive to frame rates, hypersensitive... Uh, to user input delay and stuff are going to be complaining about this. Digital Foundry is going to drop a video, likely pointing out how big of a problem this is. And guys, I, I just want you to know, if it didn't bother you in Breath of the Wild, then you're probably fine. If it did bother you in Breath of the Wild, then you're probably not fine. And it's a fair criticism. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that it's not. I just think, I just think the Zelda team wanted to craft something that might be beyond the Switch's capabilities to handle at a smooth frame rate, clearly. And I don't want to put it all on the Zelda team for this. I know, I know, I know we chastise the Pokemon team, 
Well, what was the number one thing we chased them about? Well, if Breath of the Wild that looks better than you has less problems. Again, we use Breath of the Wild as a reference point. If we use Breath of the Wild as a reference point again, and it just has the same performance issues, but with higher detailed environments, longer draw distances, and more things going on on screen, then it's still a pretty impressive feat that they don't have more performance issues than what Breath of the Wild did. They chose to use that extra processing to do more amazing things with the gameplay. I guess we'll find out when the game launches if that was the correct decision. Thank you guys for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.